Okay, I call this uh, Wednesday, May 27, 2020 meeting of the North Wales Water Authority Board of Directors to order. Roll call, please. This is Niederheiser. Here. Mr. McDevitt. Here. Ms. Mangle. Here. Mr. Tenney. Here. Mrs. Nagel. Here. Okay, do I have a motion for approval of the minutes of the meeting of April 22nd, 2020? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying yes. 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 Opposed, no. The yes has it. Okay, resolutions, uh, the 2020-10 authorization regarding our National Guard agreement. Uh, do you want to talk about that, Bob? Uh, John, I would ask uh, Barbara to okay. she's been sitting beside me on all these negotiations. Okay. Um, that's, it's... The history is all spelled out in the whereas clauses to the resolution, but um, as I'm, you know, you are no doubt aware, uh, after the assumption of the or purchase of the Warrington system, the authority was then faced with what was going to be the status of the existing agreement the township had with the National Guard Bureau relating to the PFAS uh, contamination from the uh, Corsham uh, Air National Guard field, et cetera. And um, we began some correspondence back and forth with some of the military personnel who were dealing with this issue with the township. And just finally, recently, in the last couple of weeks, we're able to have a phone conversation with them to run down what the authority's concerns are and to discuss how to put together um, basically an assignment ag agreement that under which the, the township, the authority will take over uh, remaining tasks subject to certain conditions. So we have drafted an agreement. Uh, it has not yet been sent to the military and what we we're asking the board to do is to authorize us to share that draft with the military person <coughs> excuse me personnel and to you know work out negotiating any minor changes uh, with them anything that they came back with that was substantial we would bring back to the board but otherwise asking the board to authorize Bob and our office to finalize the agreement let me add just a couple words to that. If you remember, Mike Clark and I attended a meeting at Warrington Township probably a year ago, maybe a bit longer, and the Air National Guard asked us to agree to the transfer of the Warrington Agreement to us with terms and conditions that we just found uh, non-acceptable. Uh, the, the primary issue was they wanted us to guarantee that we would undertake what they call plume control and that we would guarantee them that we would pump the contaminated wells uh, for an unlimited duration, uh, regardless of what impact that had on our uh, water system. Uh, the new agreement that Barb helped negotiate uh, does not have those provisions in it. It provides that we would pump those wells for a limited period of five years under which the Air National Guard would reimburse us for the cost of operation, but we have no obligation to run those wells if in any way, shape, or form in the sole opinion of our water authority, it diminishes our water quality from that which we receive from Forest Park. Uh, so I believe the, the, the agreement is right for your approval, and I believe it has all the provisions uh, that properly protect our authority. Uh, Barb, I have a question. Uh, National Guard Bureau, uh, I want to ask who their parent is. Uh, the United States of America doesn't sound like the parent. 
Are they under the Department of Defense? I believe so. Um, I, I can look at. I can look back at the original. Hold on. Let me see because I believe it's identified. It seems that the DOD is missing from this, and I don't even know if they should be there. Well, and you would know better, of course. Uh, like using the same language that was in the original agreement, um, which just um, says United States acting by and through the National Guard Bureau. Um, so I guess it, you know, it is a, an agency of the United States, and I'm not sure of the, uh, the levels, you know, above. But my assumption is it's part of the Department of Defense. But this is how the original agreement with Warrington was written. There was then, no mention of any other intermediary uh, level. Then is the EPA in this agreement their parent? It's almost hard to believe that National Guard Bureau is kind of uh, almost like its own entity. It, I don't know, it seems, um, doesn't seem right. Um, well, this, is, this is Bob. Um, I only know from some of the meetings I've sat into is they almost operate like independent agencies. For instance, I believe Warminster Township now has agreements with both whatever the entity is, the Navy, and they have Air National Guard or uh, the Bureau of Air National Guard and apparently what portion of the base that they were, whatever part of the facility was theirs and where the well was located uh, is which jurisdiction it has. So you could have, because they have both Johnsville Naval Air Station and Willow Grove and Warminster, and they have multiple agreements according to where the well was located within the military installation. But uh, we can certainly look at this before signatures are applied. But, well, um, it then the National Guard Bureau is essentially a tenant, a former tenant. Maybe that's the right word, or maybe, I don't know what their relationship was, but they were responsible for a portion of the base, as I understand it, and the Navy had another portion of the base, and they both are doing things, but apparently somehow someone identified the Air National Guard as a responsible party for that contamination, which took place in the Warrington Wells, that we now own under our purchase agreement. But we'll find Wait, out. One last, one last question, Bob. You just said Air National Guard. So is this Air National Guard or National Guard Bureau? I believe, Barbara, help me. I think it's uh, Bureau of Air National Guard. Is that what it is? Uh, I, I, I think, you know, we've, as in historically, everyone's always called it Air National Guard. But from what I can tell, this is the official name of the entity that we're talking about that, that was responsible for that base. Right, and okay. I believe that they are separate from the National Guard. The Air National Guard is, mm -hmm. is just that. It is the quote unquote Air Force for all of the 50 states and some of the, uh, some of the territories of the United States. So as opposed to the United States Air Force or the United States military. And I think, and I can, we can double check it, I think while they're somewhat under the DOD, I don't think they're directly under the DOD because the DOD controls all of armed forces and the National Guard and Air National Guard can be controlled by the, the governors of particular states. So I think it's a little bit of a different entity. I, uh, it just John, read like a bigger player was missing. Yeah, uh, there, I'm looking at the signature page from the original agreement with Warrington, and it's signed by a colonel in the National Guard Bureau, approved as the legal form by uh, Chief of Administration and Operations Law, and also by an adjutant general. So there's several levels of officials within uh, National Guard Bureau, but evidently no other, other uh, entity within the, the military. Thank you. Um, I, have, I have a question, excuse me, uh, on page 15 of the, uh, the packet, there's a question, uh, a note about the embossing properties, 700 properties for a pressure reducing valve. And so if you have no information about that item, whether Wellington met that requirement, is we, that something that should be uh, a concern? For us, no, we, we now basically operate Wellington. We don't know that information. I, I have every belief, Neil, that they did do those reimbursements. 
for purpose of putting this in writing, since we didn't make the payments, we have disclaimed responsibility or specific knowledge. I believe, I believe everyone that was due a reimbursement from Warrington has been paid in full. And I guess before we put this in front of Joan for signature, we'll get that confirmed. Okay, now I'd like to remind everyone we have not had a motion and a second at this point. So uh, do we want to move with a motion? Uh, so moved. Second? Second. Okay, any further discussion? Okay, all those in favor signify by saying yes. 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 Opposed? No. The yes has it. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, now, uh, no public being present. There are, uh, do we count our guests uh, from the uh, CBI? Yes. <laughs> Does he want to make a comment or? Uh, no, thank you. I, uh, again, appreciate the opportunity of just listening in. Okay, thank you. The uh, no bids and contracts this session. Uh, solicitor's report, please. Thank you. Um, just one action item uh, this evening. Uh, we have a contract for professional services between the authority, the authority uh, solicitor and uh, engineer, and Orleans Conservatory Group general partner for a property known as Grove Valley Farm, uh, located on Lime Kiln uh, Pike. Uh, this is EJOB 1058. And as always, if you would like more details about the project, uh, those questions are best asked of Brad uh, and, and Lane. All right, do I have a motion? So moved. Second? Second. Thank you. Any discussion? In case you're wondering, this is the old Pelleggi nursery on Lime Kiln Pike. They're converting it over to uh, about a 50 lot housing development. Wow. In Warrington Township. All right. All right. All those in favor signify by saying yes. 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 Opposed, no. Yes has it. Thank you. That's all we have. All right, engineer's report. Thank you. Uh, last Wednesday, um, we had a bid opening for the General Hancock tank, water storage tank, uh, contract 521-19-01A, general construction, and contract 521-19-01B, which is the electrical contract. So in the general construction contract, we had two bids. And the low bidder was CBNI Storage Tank Solutions with a bid of $9,747,660. And for the electrical contract, we had a bid, a low bid was from MJF Electrical Contracting Incorporated. And their bid amount was $175,750. So the total contract amount for both contracts is $9,000,000. $923,410 and right now we're evaluating the bidder's qualifications and references and we should have uh, full recommendations uh, at our next meeting. I think we have, have. A, uh, I think we have a representative from the uh, low bidder or the apparent low bidder. Uh, why don't you just take a few minutes and tell the board about yourself just a couple minutes and your company and um, I think you said you actually did our high point tank some years ago. Uh, well, thank you very much. I, w I wasn't uh, prepared, but I can, I've been with the uh, company for 35 years, so I think I can uh, work my way through a quick introduction. Um, CB9, uh, like I said, has been around since the 1880s, building elevated water storage tanks. We were uh, lucky enough to build your existing high point tank back in the 80s. Uh, under the name of PDM, Pitt Des Moines, which was a uh, uh, tank company that we joined together with back in 2000 or so. Uh, we are part of a major worldwide company called McDermott, which is a $17 billion um, facility that uh, 
specializes in offshore drilling rigs, refineries, power plants, et cetera. But my company, um, a division of McDermott, is called Chicago Bridge and Iron or CPI Storage Tank Solutions. And uh, we, we specialize in uh, elevated water storage tanks up and down the East Coast. Uh, as well as the rest of the country. Um, your tank uh, will tie the world's record for a single pedestal style elevated tank at 4.1 million gallons. Uh, obviously, we spent a lot of time with Carroll Engineering uh, looking at the existing high point tank and ensuring that uh, all the benefits uh, and uh, good features of the, that tank were incorporated into their design. Uh, for this one. So I, I call it, uh, you know, a 2.0 version. Um, all the updated uh, paint specs are incorporated, uh, site conditions, etc. We'll be uh, using a local general contractor by the name of Johnson Construction to support us with the foundation and mechanical work. But all of the other scope, uh, including the design of that foundation, the uh, fabrication and erection of the steel tank itself, as well as the painting of the tank, will be performed in-house uh, by CBI Resources. So uh, there's really not uh, a lot of subcontractor scope on this project. It's pretty much all tank. And uh, we're looking forward to uh, hearing that the board is uh, going to proceed with this at the, at the next board meeting, and we'll start getting the insurance certificates, bonds, et cetera, pulled together. And, Get a kickoff meeting going. Dan, this is this is Al Tenney. Uh, will the tank be identical to the one at High Point? Uh, with regards to identical, no. The height is, is different. Uh, it's a little taller. But from a general appearance, it will have the same features in terms of a dome roof, the fluted vertical um, column. Uh, supporting the bowl itself, uh, a large internal riser, uh, a steel condensate on the inside that is uh, will be creating a large operations room for the municipality's use, you know, with lighting and valves, et cetera, et cetera. So, okay. yes, it's pretty much the same tank, but the height is taller, so it'll look a little bit different just from a distance. Okay. And, and we'll discuss that extra 100,000 gallons that makes us the largest in the world. <laughs> And Al, I, said, well, so I said one inch. I didn't say a hundred thousand <laughs> gallons. <laughs> Al, Dan, oh, let's start somewhere. I, I was just going to throw out there that uh, if we were able to get a property at a higher elevation, the tank wouldn't have had to been as high as it is. But we have to match the overflow of the existing tank, so that's why the the column's going to be just taller. That's it. Okay. Right. Oh, fully agreed. Fully agreed. And and that's something that I always help consultants uh, evaluate early on in the projects to say, okay, you can buy this piece of property and the tank will you know, be this high and cost this much, or you can spend more money and buy the hillside over there and how, reduce how the much cost taller? of the tank. How, how much taller? Um, Lane, I don't actually have the North Wales or the, uh, the high point drawings in front of me. Um, well, I, 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 can't, here real quick. I can't tell you offhand uh, the additional height, but it's significantly taller than the other tank in order to maintain the same elevation. Right. So the high water elevations will match on both tanks. I think I, it's I, over yeah. 100 feet at least to the bottom of the uh, the tank itself. Okay. Yeah. I think, yeah, I think I'm, uh, I'm looking back at an old file here, and, yeah, it's probably 80 feet taller uh, at a minimum. Okay. Now, is the, is the vote next meeting? Is that what I heard? Yes. What will happen next, on is during this month, uh, Carol Engineering will review all the bid specifications to make sure that everything is as per our bid specs. They'll get the uh, insurance confirmed. They'll get the performance bonds. They'll take good care of all the paperwork, finish up, everything needed to put in front of you for signature. Okay. Dan? Good Dan, man. my name is, uh, is Donna Mangle. Um, before we take the vote, I would need the name of the principals of CBI. And also, uh, you said you were going to use what construction firm on the labor? Uh, there's a firm by the name of Johnston Construction. They're a very uh, long 
uh, and well-known construction company out of Dover, Pennsylvania. We'll be glad to get you anything you need on them also. I, I would need the principals from there, and I'm also interested in knowing whether they're union, non-union, and if they're non-union, are they paying prevailing wage? Oh, well, they, they certainly will be, uh, and uh, as will my company. Um, that's one of the reasons the tanks is so expensive because of the prevailing wages in your region. But uh, yes, no, no problem at all. We did uh, provide a, uh, a large qualification package to Lane previously uh, that contains our corporate information, but I will also get you the information on Johnston. Yeah, the, deta the details as to the amount of uh, unionized uh, work workers is important to me. Uh, zero. We are all marriage shop company, but paying uh, all the prevailing wages per the specifications. And uh, do you know anything in regards to the Johnson Company, or would you rather not speak for them? Uh, as far as I know, they are fully uh, Merit Shop also. They're a what shop? Merit Shop, open shop, uh, non-union. Okay. Non-union. Okay, thank you. Certainly. Thank you. All right. Is that it for the engineer's report? That's all I have. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Operations report. Operations report. Um, nothing out of the ordinary. I did list in the first activity on my sheet, page 23. Uh, we got through so far through the pandemic with a lot of changes. And I just wanted to, the board to know that uh, while everyone stepped up, Joe Murphy and Dave Desi really kept us in supplies with personal protective equipment, sanitation supplies, shifting, moving shifts around so we didn't have people on top of people. So I think they deserve uh, d deserve a, a, a accomplishment here. Um, they really, really got things going. Felt like a ghost town when I go into the office and there's nobody there, but uh, it's everyone is through the same thing, so. Bob, a, you'll pass on uh, the gratitude of the board to them? Absolutely. Thank you. That's all I have. Any questions about the operations report? No. Finance report. Uh, one thing about the operations report, um, I wanted to note on LinkedIn, I saw that Joe Murphy just celebrated his 37th anniversary with Nick North Wales Water Authority? I guess. He did. <laughs> he did. Yeah. We had uh, congratulations on behalf of everybody here for sticking around that long. You don't see that very often anymore. <laughs> we will convey that on behalf of the board as well. Yep. All right. That's it then, the, the finance report. You know what? I didn't hear Christine on there. You are you on with us? Yeah, I was just okay. unmuting myself. Um, so there are six bills lists on the agenda, the uh, bona fide agenda that Rita had sent out. Um, did not note anything out of the ordinary. Uh, recommend and request your approval for bills, refunds, transfers, and requisitions A through F. So move, but I do have a question. Second, and I have one is after a L. Did okay. I hear a second, Donna? I'm yes. Okay, yes. thank you. Uh, page 37, the first item of flexible circuits for $55,000. What was that? That is a water main extension that we did on Valley Road in Warrington. We make the developers put uh, the money up for the install. We just supply the materials and inspection and testing. That was her total estimate. The, the job was done, signed on, off on by Warrington. Uh, the dedication papers, everything was good to go. So we returned their contractor's installation estimate to them. We do that on all developer jobs. We okay. just hold it to make sure everything gets done. Okay, thank you. A uh, question in regards uh, to, I guess, page 25 and also 37. The um, Payments to Independence Blue Cross. How often do we put this out for um, either sealed bid or shop bid? Sealed bid, not sealed. 
but we ask for formal quotations every three years and annual um, quotes and comparisons with three different companies annually. Okay. Do we ever put it out wholesale for anybody? Uh, do we pick those three, Bob, or do we put it out for anybody? We require our broker to provide us with at least three. Um, we Every third year, we'll sort of open it up. We did a few years ago again. It's a lot of work, Donna. Um, yeah. So it's not, not that we don't want to do it, but the sure. questionnaire, Rita probably does a month's work every time we go out to do this because they want claims histories for years and years and so, stuff like that. So, uh, But we do, we do hold our our broker's feet to the fire, and we make sure they bring us several proposals uh, that are apples and apples. Uh, and we do that uh, every year, we do every year, and in three years, we do a deep drill on it. Okay, it's considerable. It, it covers how many, um, these amounts cover how many employees? About 60, Rita, we are now. Just on lost it. me. I think there's about maybe five people who aren't on the insurance, so probably about 55. 55 and probably most of those are families, right? Yeah. yeah. And they're, the five that are not are for what reason? Uh, just on their spouses. Oh. Do we give an incentive for those that will take, get off of ours and take up with their spouse? Yes. What is the incentive? 50. Half, of the, well, half of the difference? Yeah. We don't, we don't charge them a premium? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, half of what would have cost North Wales. So half of the 85% that we would have paid. You pay them directly? Yes, weekly and their biweekly paychecks. And their biweekly paychecks. Okay. And, and how do you handle those that are, uh, do we have any staff that are married or family related uh, in this matrix? Where they're on um, their spouse's plan, but the spouse works for us also, or they're a child or somebody who works for us? With the way that it's charged now, it's by individual and by age. So it really doesn't matter if they're on the same plan or not on the same plan. It would be the same amount of money. Hmm. Okay. I, I also have a general question. Uh, page 25 is an example. There's a section that just says water. I never see sewer. We, when we get... When Mike told us it was okay to kind of intermingle water and sewer years ago, um, we just never kind of updated the report to okay. take off water versus sewer. So there's no sewer checks anymore. Okay. Uh, excuse me, is this Sally? Yes. Yes, I my uh, iPad uh, failed and I'm on my phone, just so you know. Welcome back. Hi, Sally. <laughs> Hi, Sally. Hi. Hi. Okay. I'm we're, here. We're up to the bills list, Sally. Okay. Thank you. So, yeah, last I heard was um, Donna with page 37. So I had a question I didn't get. Sally, I was just questioning about the uh, independence, um, the health care costs. And I was just okay, questioning yeah. the practice of how we, we check those prices. Yes, I got that, but I thought you had said on page 37 also, but is that um, on there also? Yeah, there were listings on page 25 and 37s for payment. Okay, thank you. Yep. Got it. Okay, anything further? Can I have a roll call, please? All right. Ms. Sneederheiser. Yes. Mr. McDevitt. Yes. Ms. Mengel. Yes. Mr. Tenney? Yes. Mrs. Nagel? Yes. All right, thank you. The executive director's report. I will be brief. I, I just want to also add to the accolades for our staff. Um, we've recently been flushing hydrants. We, we're slowly resuming all, I, I'll call them normal operations. And um, Brad and Joe have worked out with our staff that we're actually doing some evening flushing of hydrants, both to separate our staff uh, as we can, and also to minimize uh, the cloudy water concerns that are raised when you do it during the day when the water mains are more active. What's of significance, I think, is our staff has done that voluntarily. We are not paying overtime. 
They are not looking for shift differentials. We have some of the crew working during the day, some working evening hours, and our staff has been incredibly cooperative in helping us through this uh, coronavirus um, dilemma that we're all in. And uh, we have people working in different buildings, working different times of the day, working split shifts all today, all at no cost to our customers. So our, our staff has indicated several times to me how much they appreciate the board of directors and uh, the way we've stood behind them. And I wanna say on behalf of your executive staff, we all appreciate it because you've made our job easier because we know we can do the right thing without hesitation and we can make the right decisions for our customers and for our staff uh, without questioning ourselves or second guessing ourselves. So I thank you all for that. Right. Um, the last thing I want to mention is nobody seems to be sure of how long this um, quarantine or whatever we want to call it is going to last. So for that reason, I'm not sure if this is the last uh, video meeting we're going to have. And for that reason, uh, if anyone on the board uh, finds the need for an authority iPad or a laptop, uh, please get in touch with Rokeeb. Uh, we have some that are sort of hand-me-downs, but still very functional. Uh, we've got new computer software, and we've had to replace some computers for uh, memory reasons and, and whatnot, but we kept the old ones, and they're still salvageable, and, and they will work. So if anyone feels that it would help them in their communications with the authority, and especially with these meetings, please get in touch with Rokeeb. We'll make those available to board members. And, um, and I think that we can continue to function as efficiently as we have been. So I have nothing else for the board, um, but think about it. If you think you need one, get in touch with Rokeeb. We'll can I, is, if Mike is still on, can I ask him to comment on the fact that uh, having dedicated uh, uh, tablets from the authority is probably best for board members that they don't mingle their personal computers with <laughs> official authority work. I think we agree. No, I, I think that makes sense. Um, I think it's whenever you're given something like an iPad or a, a laptop, uh, that as best you can, that you do your authority business on the laptop and your personal business on uh, on another device. I think that makes sense. Fine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank Fine. you. Okay. I have nothing else for the board tonight. Thank you very okay. much. Do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Second. Thank you. Thank Have a good you night all. Okay.